So happy to have you all join us today. I'm sitting next to one of my favorite people in the world and one of my mentors, Renee Funk. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, Lobby. We are so happy. sitting at EXPCon. Yes, we are. Another one. That's right. And we were just talking about the parallels and the differences of how EXP has grown over the years, EXPCon has joined over the years. Yes. And I remember my first EXPCon was New Orleans. Yep. And I think it was like 2019. When was yours? 2017 EXPCon in Fort Lauderdale. Wow. I believe you have your years off though. If Probably New Orleans did, was honest. yours, it was 2018. Oh, don't make me older than I, know. I am. See, we're getting older. Oh, it's a gosh. good thing we age well. Well, thank God. <laughs> right? So 2017, um, Jeff and I joined EXP Realty in the fall. Actually, October 1st is our anniversary date. Congratulations. Thank you. And we joined, and within just a couple of days, we hopped in the car and drove from Orlando mm -hmm. to Fort Lauderdale to go dive into what was then, we were being told, was high, high risk. You're going to lose everything. You're, you're making this decision. Your whole world is going to fall apart. And we got in the car very confidently and drove down to now what we look back at as one of the best decisions we've ever made. And how many agents were at that EXP con? How mm. big was the event? I have a photo of us all on the beach of the entire EXP con. Um, it was maybe 200. Maybe, maybe 200, yeah. Yeah, I'm just kind of guessing. We all fit in the same photo. There was <laughs> a photographer enough. who stood on a ladder yeah. and, and they had EXP con in, on the sand. And yeah, there, it was probably less than 200. Do you remember how many agents were at the brokerage at that time? Oh, yes. We were um, just crossing over 5,000. 5,000. So think of it this way. Fast forward to EXP con 2023, where we sit today in mm -hmm. October of 2023. And the room that I was mentioning, I was so proud to see you on that big, huge screen again, was for 5,000 people. Yeah. And when Jeff and I joined in 2017, we had just crossed over 5,000 agents. So the total agent count from 2017 could basically fit in the conference room that That's we're meeting right. now. And now we're sitting at 90,000 agents. Correct. I think they just did an update. So. How, from your perspective, how has the event changed over the years mm. besides just the number of people there? The events with EXP Realty have changed and grown and iterated over the years. Any company, any team, any organization is only as good as the people who belong there mm -hmm. and who are a part of it and making up what it can be and its potential. So when we think about EXP events, the events have continued to climb and grow and become more enriching because the company has grown and those that are coming are collaborating and sharing and they're opening playbooks and sharing their secret sauce. Absolutely. It's and so every single event gets better and better because the dynamic and the people here continue to grow the, and well. The quality of the people as well. Right. And it was amazing to me because I remember two years ago, uh, I think, or a year and a half ago, you know, time is, you know, <laughs> time flies when time you're having flies. fun. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I was giving feedback on, on a panel mm -hmm. and they asked, you know, what did we want to see more of at EXP Conor at these events? And I said, you know, more team leader related events, team mm -hmm. leader masterminds and icon events, because, you know, a lot of the times EXP events can really cover the basics of yeah. being in real estate. Uh, not EXP events in general, but just that's why I felt like the conferences were, right? After you go to a few conferences and you've ramped up your production, you're like, okay, I've heard this before. It's all a good reminder. Right. And I must say, the last three conferences, since I've made that comment, and I know EXP collects feedback from all the agents that attend the conference, I've seen drastic changes to yeah. the content material that's being presented and how they're shaping it based off agent feedback. Sure. Right. There's two parts to, that really stand out about what you're sharing. Number one is from day one, so October of 2017 to this very day, Glenn Sanford and EXP leadership has consistently asked for feedback, right? It's mm -hmm. agent-centric brokerage. And so whether it's events or operations or just the culture of being at EXP, the feedback request is asked, but also cared for. The, yeah. the company and leadership really wants to know. So it's good to know that that continues to be the case. I experienced that as well. 
And then from the perspective of having really strong events that appeal to the masses, you have um, new agents who are joining the brokerage and entering the industry. You have rising up agents who are in their first few years of their career. You have strong, strong senior individual agents, team leaders, right? We really have a diverse Everyone. type of the industry yeah. who join EXP. Creating successful events is going to then continue to be imperative that there are tracks that are building out content relative to each phase in the career. Yeah. Yeah. And I would agree that that is something we have continued to iterate as a brokerage that what worked in Fort Lauderdale with a few hundred people doesn't work with 5,000 people. Yeah. Right. And an agent, an agent body of, of 90,000. Right. And that, I mean, you said in there, the, the diversity of the agent body, I mean, that even lends itself to the diversity groups that have been created over the year, because oh my gosh, I yes. remember when I first joined EXP, you know, I'm part of the pride network. There was you know, a small, unorganized group of us yeah. that would get together. We have something in common. We would talk about it. And to see the, you know, EXP corporate step behind that and yes. support the group, the, the diversity groups, not only financially so that they can host events, but to grow and promote them yeah. on, on stage and stuff. I mean, that's been a huge change since we've joined the brokerage as well. It is. It's really great to see, especially with one EXP. And, and there's so many organizations and groups that have come together to really shine and to be present and hear the different voices that are so relevant and needed. Um, again, if you look back at, at the very beginning, even when I joined, there were just a few of us, right? And mm -hmm. so those groups and that inclusion that has continued to grow is as a part of leaders like yourself who are stepping up and saying, I will lean in and I want to be a part of making sure this voice is heard mm -hmm. and a part of the company in really big ways. Yeah. And the collaboration among everyone. Yeah. Right. I think you were saying it before I joined the brokerage. Um, you were speaking on collaboration. I know where the brokerage I came from I didn't really know what that was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know I was missing it, mm -hmm. right? It yeah. really, it wasn't until after I joined EXP, yeah. immediately I was like, everyone's opening their playbooks. Like we're not, we're not looking at each other as competitors. We're looking at each other as, hey, how can I help raise you up? Because that raised up us, us up as a brokerage and as an industry. Industry especially, right? yeah. yeah. I would like to thank EXP Realty and the culture and the core values that exist at EXP Realty for what I now believe is a wave in the industry. If we look back to five, six, seven, eight years ago, certainly 10 years ago in the industry, probably across every real estate office, there would be a, a setup where it would be maybe a hall down the office and all the closed doors and every agent was very much their own agent and mm -hmm. wouldn't share everything. Now those offices still exist in today's 2023. I talk to agents all the time that are coming to EXP and there are still a lot of environments where collaboration that you and I know mm -hmm. at EXP Realty does not exist everywhere. Mm. That said, I think it's EXP so is, is the brokerage that has disrupted the industry in a way to have the industry wake up and say, we don't have to compete. Yeah. We don't have to compete. Mm -hmm. And now proudly there's been a number of rooms where I've even hosted trainings with other brokerages, right? I've been in rooms that are collaborative at the Board of Realtors where there are multiple brokerages represented. And I think that the rising tide lifts all boats. I think that it is continuing to emerge throughout the industry. EXP Realty is what started and disrupted that mindset. There's mm. still work to do. Always, always still work, work to, do. to do. But EXP Realty has been largely, almost exclusively, in part to make the industry open our eyes to say there can be a different way. So we're veterans. Yep. We've been here for a while. Feel like when people are shopping for brokerages or they're looking around. Yep. And they're looking at the pros and the cons of should I join this one or should I join that one? And once they choose, sometimes you know, people choose a brokerage, they choose that vehicle to success, yeah. and they realize once they've joined, you know, they've been sold, what's it called, a lemon, right? When oh, you're, sure. You buy a vehicle. Like an, an ill yeah. bill of goods. An ill bill of goods. Yeah. Since we've been here so long, mm -hmm. is there anything that you would say, you know, was not fulfilled from that original vision you, of that vehicle to get to success by EXP? There's absolutely nothing that hasn't come to fruition from a standpoint of 
joining EXP Realty and it means X, Y, Z mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. The distinction it's important for any business owner in the real estate industry to know is that we are in control and we have the ability to define what sex success looks like. Yeah. What is an error that happens in the industry often is you may join a brokerage. There's a box that that brokerage can operate within because they don't have a lot of pathways in many cases to achieve what success looks like. Mm -hmm. So that success path becomes the one box that maybe a couple people within the brokerage, brokerage establishes. Rather than here at eXp Realty, there's 90,000 of us now. And the awesome thing is, is it's about how do you define success, Ben? Mm -hmm. How do I define success, Renee? And we can get there because we're surrounded by the greatness that exists. No one's forcing you or any of us to be in a certain box. It's about achieving what's most important to the individual. Absolutely. And so when you talk about agents who join a brokerage and maybe they feel like what they thought in the beginning was going to be is not, it oftentimes can be because there's two things. Number one is the brokerage didn't provide the right information or the person joining the brokerage didn't ask the right questions because mm -hmm. it is also about asking questions. Mostly it is about the fact that in a brokerage should allow multiple paths to success. What do you think is a great question that an agent should be asking when joining a brokerage? Uh, what does success look like for the brokerage? What does success look like for the team if it's a team? Mm -hmm. What does success look like for an individual agent? Really kick it up a notch and put an intentional time frame around questions such as if I were to align with the brokerage, what would it look like for me to achieve success over the next 12 months, 24 months, three to five years? Mm -hmm. Right. And then one of my favorite questions. See, you got me going on the questions. I know, now, I know, ben. I know. We're just yeah, being know. curious. Yes. <laughs> we'll be curious because you have to stay curious is for those that are team leaders mm -hmm. or any agent who is considering joining a team, the number one, one most impactful question to ask is what does team mean to you? What does team mean to you? What does team mean to you? Team leaders should ask that of prospective agents considering joining the team and the potential team member should ask that of the team leader mm -hmm. because teams have completely changed. Rapidly. And rapidly. Yeah. And it's an awesome thing. Yeah. But the misconception of what a team is, can be, will be, it's huge. Absolutely. So if you go back to what you mentioned where if we join a brokerage or join a team and it doesn't end up exactly how we thought, a lot of that can be diagnosed on the very first time that you have a conversation with whomever you're thinking of aligning with. Mm -hmm. Now let's say someone's at a brokerage right now, they're not considering shopping. I feel like there's some good questions mm -hmm. that they can ask themselves mm -hmm. to see if the environment they're in is really the right vehicle to get them to the next level of success. Okay. Right. Mm, <clears throat> now questions I'm coming they up those ask, questions. I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, do you have one in mind then? Um, so do you mean an agent who perhaps is in an environment and feels like something is amiss and they feel like they need to make some adjustments? Maybe yes, but maybe any agent, I think, I mean, I get super introspective, like the new year is not a good time for me. Mm. <clears throat> and February is not a good time for me to be completely honest, mostly because, uh, I, I celebrate another year in February and, yeah. and I celebrate another year in the new year. So it, I go into this very introspective retrospective view of analyzing everything I've done and asking myself questions as yeah. to, you know, is, is what I'm doing now going to get me to where I want to go? Mm. Right. Yeah. And I think that whether you're comfortable with where you're at in real estate or brokerage or your business, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, a self-awareness or a self-analyzation should happen on a regular basis. Yes. Right. Just to understand, is, are you still in the right environment or is the environment helping you or preventing you from growing? One of the things that comes to mind is it was an error that I was making for years and years and years and, and just started to gain clarity on 2023 was when I had an aha moment for years. I was misunderstanding what it meant to say, what is your why? 
Okay. And when, when you're referring to what happens at the end of the year, leading into the beginning of the year, and it's all this pressure, it's yeah. like business plans and where are you going and what are your goals? My and plans. like, every, really, your mind explodes. Why? Because it's too vague. Mm -hmm. Because even if we're looking at setting goals, while having goals and having commitments are important and certainly a time frame is important, everyone defaults to this 12 month thing, Yeah. right? And, and, and that could be fine if it's working for you. I have felt like that combined with the what is your why has never really worked for me because I would say things like my why are my children, which is true. Mm -hmm. My why is my family, which is true. Reasonable. Could it possibly be any more vague? And was it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> truly getting me into action? Yeah. An exercise that the team went through about midway through 2023. <clears throat> was resetting the why mm -hmm. and getting very specific. First of all, allowing us ourselves to be very micro if we wanted to and to define a why based on how much of what by when. Which is like the basics of every goal or standard or plan. Right. Right. Think about your why. Yeah. And I don't think I ever gave myself permission or I gave permission around me with those I would ask what's your why? what's your why yeah that it can be micro you could have a why that's relevant for the next six months mm -hmm. you could have a why that's the next 90 days so getting into that how much of what by when and sitting around a table with the agents really gave us some clarity over okay this is where everybody wants to go and it took some of the pressure off of oh my gosh it's January 1 what's our 12 month goals yeah that well, can be pressure. It's interesting because I've been having some conversations with agents recently and, and we are, everyone talks about the one year, three year, five year plan, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, and, you know, also I've read books where you underestimate what you can do in a year. No, you overestimate what you can do in a year yep. and you underestimate what you can do in a decade because everything compounds. Yep. And it's fascinating because even this morning in a conversation with uh, Gene Frederick, uh, you, which you reminded me of, he mentioned that what is life? Life is not a long journey, but a moments of very small sprints, mm. right? So why are we trying to scope out the rest of our life when in reality, it's more easy to build, easier to quantify and obtain those moments of sprints, sure. right? Sure. I mean, yeah. in, in Giving yourself permission to not freak out over the time frame, I think, is the big thing. Oh, for sure. Right? So an example is one of the agents said they want to buy a boat. And we got very specific. It was buy a boat by this date. Mm -hmm. Where were they going to keep the boat? They were going to have a vacation home. Getting very specific on that. And that was more of a longer term. That was like 24 months. Yeah. But then breaking that down too. And like, what is it about the boat that was most important? And how do we get you there closer? So I just think that the time frame is probably one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. Because even somebody could say, like, I'm remodeling my house right now. And that's a big deal that it's done within 90 day period. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that was a big part of our why. And it was, let's get it done in 90 days. They're almost done right now. Thank God. You're, going, you're moving in this <laughs> weekend, right? <laughs> Your lips to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> so going back to eXp, the brokerage has changed a lot over yeah. the years. And I know when we joined as veterans, there was a different set of benefits. I mean, we have our standard benefits yeah. and we have our standard things that attract people to eXp. But how is it different in your eyes of joining EXP back when we did four or five years ago mm. versus joining now yeah. as an individual agent? Very, very vague question there, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> very big question. How's it different? Well, one of the consistents has been that the value package that exists at EXP Realty has been plentiful from day one. Yes, absolutely. Right? Value package plentiful. And the other consistent is that, and I've heard Glenn Sanford say this many times before, and we're seven years in and it's been the same, is that Glenn's not looking to change the compensation model. Mm -hmm. Glenn is looking to change the value that is within the compensation model and continue to iterate on what the value looks like 
based on the agents who are a part of the brokerage and the feedback that they're receiving. Okay, so those are consistent. What's changed is the value. The values continue to grow. And compound. And compound. Yeah. And the value in so many ways is a accumulation of resources, benefits, assets, everything from look at just healthcare plans being available now to this day that were not seven years ago. Yeah. How did that happen? The company yeah. asked what was most important to the agents. Mm -hmm. And the agents kept saying over and over again, there is no healthcare plan that makes sense for agents. NAR couldn't figure it out apparently, right? The largest association of professionals in the world with 1.7 million members, and yet Glenn Sanford and EXP Realty could come up with a very solid, life-changing program that offers plans and alternatives for those that are seeking healthcare. Mm -hmm. So it's that one piece alone has been something that, that happened because agents had a voice. And they're improving it year over year. Sure. Yeah. If we just took the look at the healthcare as an example, is the first year that it exists, uh, my family did the quote and the, the company said, it's not a good time for you to make a move yet, stay yeah. where you are. Second year went back, did another quote, oh my goodness, the plans had changed. So mm -hmm. every year the plans um, iterate and continue to grow and it's a good option. Yeah. So whether we talk about the healthcare or any of the benefits and the, the all of the resources, I think the biggest, most notable thing is EXP agents are shareholders. Yeah. And EXP World Holdings is largely filled with shareholders that are the agent body. Mm -hmm. When shareholders are the agent body, decisions for the company are very much weighted on what the shareholders' opinion are of those assets. So when you compare it to a brokerage where you don't have ownership, mm. do you really have an impact and say in what happens or is that brokerage really caring about your impact and what you will need? Right? Take a look at some other brokerages that there are opportunities to become a shareholder and do an assessment of who are the largest shareholders within that brokerage. Yeah. At eXp Realty, every agent can become a shareholder from their very first transaction. And I think the most impressive thing I've seen over the years is, especially with our growth, right? A ton of growth. I think when I joined, maybe it was 10,000 agents. Now we're at 90,000 agents. Just in a few short years. Fastest growing brokerage yep. in, in the United States. And the, the ability to collect the agent's voice has also grown as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There are systems in place for agents to be able to provide feedback. There's the Agent Advisory Council. Yes. Or committee, council. AAC. AAC. Agent Advisory Council. Council. We got it. <laughs> which was which was one council yes. for the entire country. And shout out to our friend Justin Adams. Yes. Who is now representing Florida because they have expanded the council. Yay, Justin. And they have agent advisory councils for multiple states now. That's right. Right. So just as everything, just as we are expanding, the the brokerage is not like they're not tuning us out. Everyone is Absolutely still not. very accessible. So More accessible. I just ran into Glenn in the halls, right? I just yeah. ran into Jeff Whiteside from our board of directors. You were at uh, a lunch where you had a board of director member there. So I think that, you know, so we talk about another thing that hasn't changed, and that's that the accessibility and the agent voice hasn't changed. Going back to one other thing that's changed is the company continues to look at strategic partnerships. Mm -hmm and what will elevate the company strategically for the agents. So EXP just announced the affiliation and the partnership with Open Door. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. To further enhance Express Offers, which is the iBuyer platform. These are things that is constantly a focus at EXP, something we should all be very proud of. Constantly improving the value. Constantly. So the thing that hasn't changed since we joined <laughs> is our splits. The thing that has <laughs> is the value over the years. That's right. Amazing. That's right. Oh my gosh. Well, we could, could go on on and on. I know. I think we need a show. Let okay. us know if you think we need a show together. Please. I, it would be an honor to work with this one more. I would love it. Podcast, anytime. All the things. Yeah. All right, Ben Lobby. Well, thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you for having and me. And we'll do this again. Let's do it again. Make it a great day, everyone. Stay curious. Stay curious. That's her yes. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, it's Ben, team leader of Ben Lobby Homes. If you like this video, check out our next one or anything else on our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe link or start your home search at our website anytime you want.